sequencing emotion in delicate formation. Numerology's wisdom is a language of vibration. Welcome to the Numerology Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a numerologist, psychic medium, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's working with spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, precision and heart always enters the equation. Now, your host of the Numerology Hour, Kelly Brickle. everybody welcome to the numerology hour i'm kelly brickle and this is the show where we dive into the power number every week we focus on a different concept in numerology and we just dive in and have fun with it whether there are questions whether it's off the cuff um towards the end of the show we always take just a couple readings with numerology hello stephanie hello and and that's how we do it this is a show of information and expansion with the numbers so yes what is the power number the power number in numerology is about how we act when we need to get things done. So it's how we act sometimes in a crunch all the way to what our luck is. So think of that spectrum when things are going like really well and you're just like, I'm in my flow, I'm in my power and like the do doors are opening, like the I'm in flow. It's just, you know, I, I feel like I'm in my groove. You are activating your power and you're in full stream. And then when you're in survival mode on the other end, you're like, let's just get this done. Can I get what I need to do? You know, like you're hail marrying it. You're, you're just hoping fingers crossed. Um, but in order to get it done, your innate power enacts. So this is a number that necessarily doesn't embody your personality per se. It's a very important part of you, but you don't see it exhibited necessarily with knowing who a person is unless you really see how they get things done. And we don't always look at that within people. The people that we know really well, we can say like, yeah, that's, that's how it comes out. But it's important to identify this as well. And it's one part of your core six in Western Pythagorean numerology. So the core six numbers are the six numbers that we kind of walk the world in, whether um, somebody sees us a certain way, um, it's our personality, our expression, our job, um, so in obvious ways and not so obvious ways, this is the energy that we walk the world um, in. And the power number is devised from your name, okay? So it's one of the name calculations. There's some that are birthday calculations, and then there's name calculations, and then there's other calculations. But this is one of the name calculations. And this is what you get from your full name, so uh, important distinction though, like disclaimer, because we're talking about names. We have to be very specific when talking about names. That's how we work in numerology. Um, it's your full name that you go by in the world, okay? It is not your middle name unless you identify personally and identify and introduce to others as, hi, my name is first, middle, and last name. Most people don't do that, okay? Um, so it is the full name that you use within the world on an active basis basis, and how your personality um, is expressed with your name within, let's say, career, within a family. Uh, if your personality is like, I have one name with career, I have one name with family, and you feel like your identity is both things, then you might have two power names, okay? So we always talk about that. Um, it's technical, but just heads up, think about it like that. 
but your power name is just your first and your last name usually, and most people just have one singular identity um, that they use most often. So remember when you're getting into like your full name, like on your birth chart and your middle name, that's a different calculation, okay? So it is looked at, but it's a different calculation. So for the power uh, number, you're going to use the vowels and consonants. So, and that's how you get the name. Yes. So if there's any questions on that, just let me know. Sometimes it can be confusing. Sometimes people just go, mm, makes sense. Once you get your, um, your name fully figured out, so every letter breaks down into a number and then you add up all those numbers. Once you do that, you reduce it to a single digit as usual. And then you go, hey, this is what vibration I am. And so we always go through one through nine. So with one, if you are a power one, so your first name and last name reduced to one digit, you are going to have like this resolve as a one to really just do it. Okay. And it comes from a place of like, it's not, you're, you're not getting advice. You, you're not, you're not being told what to do. You just act instinctually. Cause you're like, I gotta do it. Or this is what needs to be done. This is what my instinct is telling me. And that's how the power number works anyway. Like it's very instinctual, but one is very like, I don't need to overthink this. Let's just go. Now, if they do overthink it, <laughs> they're really gonna they're really gonna mess things up because one can be an overthinker, but in its most successful form, it's not overthought. And um it it lets people be confident, actually. It lets people be decisive because one is just this direct presence. It's not really split. So they, um, ones usually have really good gut instincts. Um, all the numbers can overthink. They really can. But certain more mental um, numbers can overthink more. So like the ones, the fives, and the sevens, and sometimes the eights, they have the tendency to overthink and they can like stop um, their natural instincts sometimes. So just heads up with that. But the one, like, its desire is to, you know, be the best or be self-sufficient or its its desire is to be uninhibited and just to act within what they feel drawn to and what they feel is right or what they think is right. And so when you have that unbridled, things just get done. Like, think about it. You have an idea, then you act. Well, we all have those moments, but, like, it is very nice if you have a dream and you're just acting on it or if things are going topsy-turvy and then you have the audacity to just speak up and handle it um, or to go, hmm, yeah, not by me, right? So these people are very decisive with what bodes well for them and what doesn't bode well for them. And because of that, they are more prone to act and be self-preserving, okay? And then hello to everybody coming on in. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tina. And ah, cool. And then hairdresser is saying, catching my first live. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I love it. So with the power two, we're going to jump to that. The power two, um, it's a very, again, remember two is a very sensitive vibration. It deals with how we feel within our body, how we act. Um, what we're picking up, like to use like a radio where it's always picking up these different frequencies on a level where the body is like kind of disturbed a little bit because it can't let go of just being so empathetic, having extreme empathy. So the two is in constantly need of balance. Okay. So when a power two is enacted, it's like, I just feel right. It's an overwhelming knowing or an overwhelming sensation of feeling like they have to make the decision or they have to help another person 
Um, a lot of times, I think power numbers are really important to talk about when we're in limbo, okay? A lot of times we're in limbo, like, should I, shouldn't I do this? And your power surges and goes, who are you? Is this really a good decision? And so the two works brilliantly because it amplifies that gut instinct very strongly. And you're really good on the fly. And you're really in tune to this feels right, this feels wrong. Um, I'm going to not overthink this. I'm going to just be in a state of flow with knowing that this is the right thing to do. Okay. So it invites people who have this in their chart to actually lean into their intuition more. When you have something like a soul to or a power to, um, these are inner parts of you. So there's, remember there's external numbers and then there's internal numbers, just like there's external parts of your chart and there's internal parts of your chart. So the power number a lot of times is, in, it can be external too, but a lot of times it's internal. It's like, what is the mechanism that drives you? And so it allows people to lean into just trusting things more because they go, I don't know what I'm doing. I just feel it. And when I feel it, it works. Okay. Now, if you have like a one, and we just talked about a power one, you are going to be naturally a little bit more cerebral and just go, I think this is the best thing for me. I'm going to do it. Right. I've been having thoughts. It just makes sense. I'm going to do it. And so your driver will be very self contained. And you'll be like, it has to make sense to me. But when it does, boom, I activate. With the two, you're like, this doesn't make any sense, but sure. It's the only thing that works anyway, right? So again, it's there's different ways that people surrender to just making things happen. Sometimes you just have to go, this surge or the thing leading me on to the next thing I'm just going to surrender to the overwhelming tidal flow of where it's going to take me, where I need to go. And the twos really get into that watery go with the flow vibration. Okay. And then they're in their power, right? So, so to highlight again, the power number, once you're in the flow, if you are a two, you get to where you need to go. And the power number makes things happen like opportunities. It makes you sometimes say the right thing. It makes you catch the ball at the right time if it's coming towards, you know, how does your instinct enact? Um, so you can save it before it hits your face, right? Or, um, you know, you, you turn the car at the right time to avoid, you know, a collision. It's how does that enact? And people get to certain like gut instinctual, this is how I survive, or this is how I have success, or this is how I'm lucky from these drivers. And you have to really teach people to learn about how they activate their power. Everyone uses energy differently. Everybody wields energy differently. Um, I think that's so important to talk about because we, there are certain core, like power is power, right? You have to be one with yourself. You have to know yourself to a certain degree to, you know, make things happen and understand your boundaries and understand your strengths and weaknesses. But we all have different ways on how we get there and how we use energy. And, and numerology is a translation of how we use energy. Okay. So let's jump to the three. All right. The three's power is when they are in the flow of creativity, when they're in the flow of expressing themselves. So you will find that like with writing, you'll just get your ideas. With speaking, things will just like come out and you're like, well, that, that was said, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Like you have to be expressing yourself and being in your creativity. So being in your fire and being your air energy, the fire is creation energy, the air is you know, the flowing of thoughts. You have to be free flowing 
and around others to enact this kind of ping pong, like, you know, I get inspiration off of you or I'm amused for you. And we bounce off of each other and we get energy going. And since there's energy going, suddenly I'm brighter. Suddenly I'm clearer. Suddenly um, I kind of just know what to do and I'm in my state of flow. Um, we have to know how to enact these powers. So when you know about the certain archetypes to a certain degree of the numbers, like we know that three is creativity and communication. We just know that. So put yourself in environments where you can use more of that because you're going to be lucky. So someone could have a life path three and they their energy will open up on their life path the more they express themselves the more they put themselves out there that's true but they might be lucky with how they do that with a different number or they might push themselves to continue on their career and have their resolve and have you know their strength and have their tenacity restored to them when they lean into a certain number so do you understand like everything works differently in numerology, even though the archetypes are actually quite similar, definitely. So with that power three, you want to make sure that you are expressing yourself. So for instance, in order to be lucky or in order to feel like you are your truest you, you can't suppress your your, your thoughts. You have to use your voice. You have to speak up and things will go better for you because of that. Like for instance, a seven, I'm going to, you know, give a contrasting example. If you, and I'm jumping for a second, if you are a power seven, if you speak up as a power seven, you might not be so lucky because that's not where, um, you draw your resolve from or what works for you in a crunch. In fact, it might, it would backfire on you more often than not. Okay. So it, this is how we think about, about things. Cause seven is more introverted number. Three is a very extroverted number. It's probably, you know, I, I think of it often as the most extroverted number of three because it needs people so dearly to activate itself. So speak up. If you're a power three, it builds luck around you it makes people like you, it makes people work with you, and it gets you to where you need to go. So think about it. Three is such a people-friendly number. When you speak up, you'll probably have allies. And sometimes getting things done and being lucky is not just up to oneself, maybe as a power one, but as a power three, it's not. Use your allies, make friends, uh, you're in it together. Okay. So a power four, as a power four, you're going to draw your luck and you're going to get things done by having consistency, okay? Four is the methodical number. It's very planned. So if you are being consistent and you're going one to the next, one to the next, it's almost like the energy can't, you know, deny you. You have the built up energy to just push through the door or push through the obstacle. You prepared yourself um, where your energy goes. I know what to do. Obstacle, no worries. And it's almost like whatever happens, you're prepared for it. Even though you didn't prepare for the stuff that was coming up, your energy is just ready. So when people have power of fours, as long as they're responsible within the things that they need to do, the way just opens. As long as they're focused, because fours is a very cerebral number. It's the number of knowledge. It's a very um, grounded, foundational number. It needs to have structure in order to express itself. As long as your energy and your body is settled and locked into where you need to go, and you have a sturdiness on your approach to get there, things go very well. You know, luck favors the prepared. This is very, very true for the power four. Okay. 
And people as well tend to want to hear your knowledge. That's another thing. So four is not known for being the most social number always, but it likes to share knowledge either directly or indirectly. And so if you are showing up sharing quality and, and, and saying, hey, this is what I'm doing or or let me let me teach it to you. Um, people are very receptive. They're very open and that also can open doors for you because of it. Okay. Power five. If you're a power five, in order for you to rev your engine and be in your flow, you have to be unbridled within your life to a certain extent. You know, we, we can't be like buck wild in every area of our life. You know, we'd be like anarchists, right? No rules. You know, it's a free for all. But but you have to have a lot of flexibility within what you are tackling. So you would have a very structured life. In fact, your other numbers could not even be that five focused. But your power five means in a crunch, uh, you shouldn't plan. You need to wing it. Okay. And when you wing it, it goes really well. You see how these, if you don't know how you work, you can really backfire things on yourself. And like, think about it, like growing up or even now, like we don't have it all figured out. You know, we go, ooh, it's going to be a stressful week. Ooh, it's going to be a stressful day. Or, oh, I bit off more than I can chew. Or, yowza, how are we going to do this one? And we go, what strategy am I going to use? And sometimes we do not pick the right strategy and it does not go well. And we go, oh my God, I just, it's not like I didn't try. Why didn't this work? It's not like I didn't try. It's because we have certain energies that flow very well for us. And then we have energies that actually (laughs) counter our efforts. So, I mean, you need energy to get the job done. So there's times where you know exactly what you need. And like, let's say you're too tired or you're sick or, Let's say you're very stressed. If, if, if those are in play, you could know exactly what you need and you can know exactly your power, but you might have obstacles getting from, you know, A to B from where you're needing to go because there's something within your energy that needs to be rectified and healed and seen and you're not looking at it properly or you're not giving yourself patience and time to actually open up your energy, which in a way is so natural and beautiful and powerful to you. That's a separate discussion. But when we get into the things of, I have a bunch of energy and let's rock it. And like, I got this, but then you're having things backfire on you and you're getting just stressed in situations you shouldn't be stressed in. That's because you're not using your power number correctly. That's because you're not understanding what really works for you. You know, so I talk about things in a numerological perspective, but I also talk about things in like a life perspective. And I'm just like, it's, you know, you're not doing what was working for you. And we, we shine the light on that through this modality with the numerology. And that's why you know, I think it's so amazing um, when we truly apply the numbers. So Yes, if you are a power five and you're using power four principles, like if you're if you're a power five and you need to wing it, that sounds very strange for some people to just wing it. And you're planning things and you're like, well, you know, you have to stick to the plan. I worked really hard at this. Um, unless things are going like really great and you know, you need to stick to the plan by, you know other means of you had to do it or, you know, the, the, it's being guided by somebody else and you're just following instructions. It's probably not best to do that because you're going to have your most create creative moments and your most lucky moments. If you're possibly inspired by the script, uh, but you don't stick to it. Like, Trust your instinct to go to the bathroom at a random time. You'll bump into someone you're supposed to talk to. Trust your instinct to try a different coffee that day because the barista is going to be like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite coffee, and then tell you a story. And that story gives you inspiration for the speech that you decided to tweak later on that day because you had a better uh, anecdotal uh, analogy for stirring up the crowd 
you know, it, it's stuff like that. Um, you have to allow life to give you a better option with the power of five. You go, okay, I'll show up. Let's see what happens. And you either pull from just what uniquely surfaces in you or you pull from your environment. And right, it's kind of a very much just I trust and I'm not going to overthink it per se. Now, the five naturally is a cerebral number. It loves to learn, but it loves to learn on the fly. It loves to learn, but it loves to do on the fly. And it's very hands-on. So when it learns, it's not learning from a book primarily, unless there's other numbers influencing it. So the five goes, ooh, I'm stimulated by an idea. Okay, I'll think about this and I'll think about that. But then it just is in the moment. So just be in the moment uh, and everything goes well. All right. So a power six, a power six, um, you're going to draw your, your inspiration for what gets you from A to B and what gives you, you know, your oomph and your luck for pouring your heart out for others. And we always have to make sure our cup is, is full too, as well as we do this, but it's almost like your if you, if you have a lot of six energy even more so or if you have a lot of people energy numbers even more so but for people who just have a power six helping others really gets them out of bed in the morning like if someone's in true need or if there's some type of an emotional connection and they can kind of be superman or superwoman or just offer even little things like an uplifting smile or like, hey, I'll take that to the, the, the copier printer for you. Like it could just be little things. But if they know that they made somebody's life easier or better, it's like energy from the universe like surges through them and they just go, oh, I have more energy now. <laughs> so it's almost like this battery gets just full, like, they're the energizer bunny and their battery just gets stronger and stronger the, the, the more they help within reasonable human limits, right? Um, but they can generate energy very effectively by being of service. And so usually being around family makes them feel at peace and makes them feel um, very responsible and capable or being around friends or being around something of meaning or bringing people together. If they can bring people together or calm people down or, or make people feel safe, um, they feel like, okay, today is a good day. Okay, I have what I need to, to get going um, because they have so much energy naturally, the sixes, that, that if they're having trouble within their life manifesting or making things happen, it's because they're not using just their natural people skills to feel self-motivated. When you have people numbers, you have to be around people to charge you up. You have to be around people for your energy um, signatures to enact. So the six is about actually being a leader sometimes within people. A lot of times it is, but it's solely within people, unless you have other numbers that want you to exert even more leadership. The six goes, we're pulling everybody together. Why? Because everything feels better this way. Why? Because, you know, communities thrive together. Why? Because no one wants to feel left out. It's better this way. Let's all support one another. And so the room builds, the six builds, and the way opens up. And sixes are magnetic. So if you can charge yourself, people, as long as you're centered, <laughs> this is true. As long as you're centered and like you're coming from a good place, people just kind of give the sixes things because they're just like, oh, you're really nice or, oh, you're doing really nice things. Um, yeah, sure. You can do this. And the sixes are very generous too, actually to others. So, you know, they, the people mirror that back to them. They're just like, oh, you, you, you want to, you, you want to stay a little later? Like, sure. I'll give you the keys. Oh, you want this? Yeah, sure. I trust you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. So doors open through that because people just trust the six. Okay. 
Um, all right. So seven, power seven. So the power of seven is when you take the time to look at things properly. When you take the time to really see what's real. And we need a moment to step back and go, what is what? We have good instincts sometimes, understandably. And sometimes, you know, you just know. But the power of the seven is even if I'm deeply compelled by the universe to know something, let me just admire the beauty of all the details and let me admire the process of why I know that. Let me just be enthralled by kind of stepping back and taking in the beauty of that. So whether you don't want to do it or whether you love just letting that that wisdom wash over you, it is needed in order to fuel how you go forward. The appreciation for wisdom is needed or the pause for wisdom is needed in order to be lucky because you notice the details as a power seven and that is your power with going, hmm, did you catch that? Did you notice that? Oh, no, I never noticed that. Wow, that's really perceptive of you. Wow, your mind thinks like that. Your mind works like that. Yeah, that's a really good perspective. Or wow, that's a very logical conclusion. Uh, Thank you. And your brain and your carefulness will open doors. Seven is a mental number as well, a cerebral number as well. And it needs its alone time. But once it has what it needs, it steps out and People will reward you within your own power by going, wow, that person really has their head on straight. Okay. And you need sometimes temperance and control and you need to get your energy straight sometimes in order to be that. Um, But the universe goes, you've aligned your energy. Now you have alignment wherever you go. So whether it is more spiritual or whether it is more practical, within the practical sense, the seven power number activates within people who step back, assess what they're doing, and they go, that's the right decision. I've taken my time. I have assessed things properly. I did my work. I made the connectors. That's what I'm choosing. And the doors open through that vibration. So now we're going into power eight. So power eight enacts when someone is taking into account their needs on a very foundational level. Eight is a number of truth and consequence. And it's the number of justice too. And so how is justice served in the universe? It's like, did you do what you needed to do to get things done? It is what it is. And if you weren't prepared, if you did not do what you needed to do, then you can't manifest. And so you didn't do the bare foundational requirements. So nothing's going to happen. You don't, you don't get to manifest. You did some of the bare, let's say, minimum requirements. Okay, so you'll have a minimal harvest. You put your back into it. You want this to work. And you were very thorough and realistic with what it's going to take. Okay, you're going to have a very realistic. And if you really put your back into it, abundant harvest. So it's basically like what you put in is what you get. But since it's an eight, it's very amplified. So it's not just within the ballpark of it's what you sow is what you get. And that eight is going to make people really kind of have these hard moments of reality of, oh, In order to get that done, I can't run away from that. Can I? I have to look it straight in the eye and I have to handle that. 
So it's it's a cold reality mixed with uh, when I do well, wow, it just, I do it better than anyone else. It's the, it's that spectrum of there's not much gray with an eight, unfortunately. There is, it's the learning curve. The gray is the learning curve for the eight. But the power of the eight is that it constantly is understanding, hmm, I needed to tweak this. Ah, I could, you know, okay, I got by, but I know it's not going to happen again, right? So you're constantly getting downloads of how you can come into a place of more efficiency and abundance. And as long as you're course correcting, things do go well. But if you really course correct and you apply and you take full responsibility, things go very well. And a power eight can have a lot of success with money and luck because eight is a number of abundance, but in order to reap its benefits, and sometimes they can really, really, like I said, uh, you know, three is the most, most uh, let's say, extroverted number or social number, but eight can be the most abundant number, but you have to go through some hard knocks or you have to really sober up and be disciplined to enact that. Okay, so we're in our power uh, nine. And so um, power nine is you get your luck and you have your gut instincts. When the situation ignites in you, the resolution of not just yourself to be considered. If you are coming from a place of charity, service, uh, if you're coming from a place of this is the right thing, things go well. Um, one of my favorite examples, and I should be giving examples for all the numbers, but sometimes, you know, I float and I flit wherever I go. But a power nine, if let's say someone is going through a hardship and they're like, I don't have enough money to pay for today. It could be like, let's say it's like Reiki or something or um, like some type of service um, where it's for someone's benefit to have it, but for whatever reason they can't pay or they can pay, but you know that they're struggling and you go, Hey, let me give you a discount. Let me give you a discount or, you know, it's on the house. Um, let me, let me help you out. Well, your power and luck gets enacted through this because the universe goes, okay, you're thinking about more than just yourself. Um, you're enacting uh, now this well within you that can now generate this, this service. And since that's in place, it comes back to you. So what happens is that that generosity will create business since you did the right thing by a person and you have to really feel like it's the right thing. Like you have to intrinsically feel it's the right thing. All of a sudden the, the person goes, thank you. Oh my gosh. And they recommend five people to you. Or there's just that, that energy in the air where you're just like, I don't know. I feel good. I feel good. I feel like I did the right thing. And so your energy starts to be magnetic and pull in more business because you're in your flow. And so I actually see that like happening with people with power nine, as long as they do the right thing. And again, you have to respect your boundaries. Nine's all about boundaries. But if they're a little bit charitable, it bodes well. Now, if a power eight did that, <laughs> mm, <laughs> it, it would have to be really technical. But uh, if a power eight just gave away services, um, or a power four just gave away services, it might not bode very well for them. The person would be like, thank you so much. And then business would not come from it because their luck is not activated with giving back. Their luck is activated as a power four with planning. Um, as a power eight, their luck is activated with making sure they followed through with all the steps that they needed to follow through in. 
they can be generous at other times, but they won't receive further luck from their generosity. A six will, a three will, and a nine will. A six, absolutely more so, and a nine, abs absolutely, because nine is the humanitarian number. It's all about there's a bigger purpose than just myself. How do I fit into it? How do I flow with the universe? There are no rules. So I would say start to look at your power number. Start to learn more about who you are and make sure you're calculating it right. We went into it at the beginning of the podcast and the show of how to calculate the power number correctly. And go, do I see myself doing these things right now? Or when things go well for me, do I notice I am doing these things within this vibration? Learn about yourself. Learn about how you operate. And really go, hmm, does it feel good to be more of this way? And don't just read something off the internet. The most powerful thing with numerology or anything in life is learn about what your energy is. Label it, feel it, study it, analyze it. Whatever way you go about it, describe the energy. And the more you learn about other modalities and they're accurate, you just can go, oh, I understand that because I know my energy. Not rather the other way around, let me read a description and see how I fit into that. So know your energy. This should validate who you are, not tell you who you are. It should inspire who you are um, because we all do, do, do things differently. And some ways of doing things just don't work for us, not because it's in a description, because we just are the way we are. So lean into that more than anything else I ask you. In fact, you know, that's how you're in your power. And we're talking about the power number today. Okay, so let's go into readings um, a little bit. I love it. It's 1144 in my end of the world. Um, 1144 is a 55. And so it's, it's the master numbers of 1144, but together added up, they're also a 55. And then you reduce that to one digit, which is a one, because five plus five is a one. And so it's letting me know to keep going and to keep, you know, my pace and to trust. And so a five inspires you to keep going and to not overthink it and just enjoy the ride. And the five plus five, one vibration is like step into who you are. And trust yourself. So whenever I see that, I just go, mm, keep going. All right, you're defining your sense of self. Keep going. You know, it's going to be busier than you expected. You're going to have to push yourself, but you will be supported and you will evolve from it. This is for the good of yourself. When I feel tired, sometimes I get fives and reminders of one. So today I feel a little tired, but that's okay. Um, I have my little um, surge for the universe. And that's just one way how quickly I read just numbers on the clock right in front of me when they jump out. Okay, so let's take some of the numbers, uh, like Tina, I know you popped down yours earlier. Anyone else coming in, if you want a numerology reading, um, it's the time to do it. I always take a couple, pop down your numbers. You can pop down a question with it. You can ask for a general reading, um, or you can uh, just ask about a specific area of numerology too, if you have just a question. That's how we work. All right, so Tina asks, am I on the right track? What do I need to know? I am stressed and depressed lately, worrying about health and financial stability, stability, family and friends. And I was going to go see a friend. Let's see, this is, she's mentioning like a wedding and very, very, oh God. 
And of course, so she, at a wedding, she'll see her friends and family, but I don't know if I should spend money uh, to go and see them or save it for the time being. Gotcha. Okay, so so basically, there's there's a lot on the table. Well, I'm going to answer this from multiple perspectives, but we're going to go into the numbers. Absolutely. Attitude, nine. Personal day, eight. Life path, five. Let me just double check that. Yep. Attitude eight. Why am I? Sometimes the first one, I really got to wake up the brain, right? Luckily, I just mentioned to the world that I'm tired. So you'll forgive me. Um, so you're a personal day eight. And then you are an attitude eight as well. And then you are then going to be a four. That's right. It'd be a four. Okay. Math is so fun. All right. Yeah, that's right. And then you're going to be in a cycle of got it, six. You're in a cycle of six. Okay. And then you're asking about this month. Uh, the wedding is this month, correct? If you can pop that down. I th is the wedding this month? Um, that would help clarify a little bit. Okay, cool. Okay. So, all right. Well, you are in an attitude of, you have an attitude of eight. You have a life path of four. Um, there's multiple things bouncing around for me, okay? So the four makes you to be a logical person as, as long, along with the eight. It makes you size up things much more logically than your average person. It goes, hmm, is this a really good idea? And, and that's how you live your life. Um, when you are in a good state, you size things up pretty routinely pretty routinely. That is something that helps you live a good life and make good decisions. Um, that is a core part of your personality. I understand that. Um, you're in a cycle of six. And so a cycle of six is all about family, friends, who's really there for you, how you're really there for others. And it's it goes back to the emotional parts of you, which what, what really fulfill you. So I'm going to talk on that for a second and then I'll go into the numerology again. Um, like for a wedding and for people who are really important to your heart and soul, it is always important. If these people are truly important to your heart and soul. Um, and sometimes we have to ask ourselves that sometimes we have good friends and we go, how important are they to my heart and soul? You might have known them for a long time. You might have not known them for a long time, but for whatever reason, those people seem like they're in your soul tribe or you just have a deeper uh, resonance with them. And if that's the case, it's always important to see those people because they spark vitality in life within us. When we have good people that we genuine, genuinely connect to, they make life worth living and they open up energy within us that allows us to have more um, energy for other things. Like when we're around love, when we're around happiness, when we're around true connection, it makes us become vivacious. And when we're vivacious, we attract, we see things more clearly Life is easier. Life is better. And so that energy is worth its weight in gold. And also what you can give to other people. If you know that you have a connection with people and you make them feel like that too, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, do what you can to get over there if you have some of those connections. If you're if you're not quite sure, um, you know, that's a different story, but if you are, so you're writing down definitely soul friends, 
Um, okay. And another one is close to the end of stage of life. Get over there. Get over there. Okay. Um, life needs to express itself. And when we express ourselves from a place of truth and connection, and we know something within us longs to be a certain place, and there's really, really good reasons why life rewards you and says, we're going to, you trusted yourself enough and you loved yourself enough to go do something good for you. And others are going to feel the same and reap the same benefit. Now, since you opened up your life to make sure that happened, we're going to continue to open up your life in other areas. You set this, you set the chain reaction. You make the decision, even though it's hard this is good and I want to live a good life. And so since I want to live a good life, I ignite and take steps to have good energy. And good energy is truth. Good energy is love. All these things, all these things. So it's for me, even though it's difficult, it's important. It's so, so, so important. Uh, Your cycle six will be beautifully enacted and um, strengthened some of the the lessons you need to know too during this time. It's, it's, it's a win, win for me. It's a win, win for me. Um, You had an eight month, excuse me, you had a five month in the month of August and you have a six month this month for September. So when we have a month that matches our cycle number, that's also a great time, potential of healing and lessons. And so all these lessons are in the the mode of family and friendship and being a part of your tribe. Again, in every single direction, it's a win-win. Um, since last month, August, you were a five, you might've found yourself, uh, traveling and you didn't mean to travel or be more active. There was a change that like forced you to shake up energy and move. Um, August would have been a great month for travel for you as well. But if right, you're overthinking things or you're, you're tight on resources, it makes you move in other areas but it will get you ready. Like, like you were ready, you were ready to go already, but you were overthinking it in the five last month helped you to go. I really should do this. I really should do this. So, all right. I'm glad that it resonated with you. And, um, I mean it from my heart, please go, please really go. It's important. And it'll, it'll show you why it's so important in ways you just couldn't even logically expect when you go there. Um, my heart goes out to you. Make sure you go, please. Okay. So, Lori, 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 Lori. Let's see. Popping down. 4.30. You're welcome, Tina. Absolutely. Seriously. Thank you for, you know, sharing your heart with such a, important question. Thank you. And, you know, I'm sending you love. I'm sending you so much love. You're an angel right back. Okay. Okay. Lori, attitude seven, personal day three, life path seven. And so let me just double check here. Personal day three, attitude seven, and life past seven, and you are in a cycle of five. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a very impactful month too as well. Um, September is usually, an, it's, it's, it's such an amplifier month for a lot of people. Uh, nines tend to do that in numerology. Um, And so you are in a place where you are going to be kind of forced into change, forced to look at things differently. Um, Even if you 
have experienced certain information, certain knowings about yourself, really you're thrusted into a a place of what are we going to do about it and how do we need to change our lifestyle and life so we are in a better place because the old doesn't work anymore and the old is creating problems. It's bogging us down. It could complicate health things. It can complicate um, our state of clarity within our head. Um, It can complicate even how our family works with us because what just has worked before backfires for whatever reason. It's time to go into a different stream. You're in a cycle of five. So cycle of five is all about unexpected change. It's all about you are thrusted into new environments that make you be instinctive with how that you choose things rather than overly analytical. Your numbers would actually make you very analytical and make you think a lot and make you carefully go through things and make you go through every detail. But Um, The cycle of this month and the cycle of this year is busting that for you. Um, So it's going to feel a little bit out of control this month. Yeah, it's going to feel a little out of control this month, like fives and sevens. I mean, I, I kind of, I know some of your other, like, I know you have like sixes and nines in certain placements, Lori, because I've, I've done your numbers before and the fives, uh, don't go really well with the sixes, but they go well with the nines and the sevens. Okay. So it's actually, you're going to feel like kind of push and pulled, but it's going to get you going. You're going to be like, okay, I had, I kind of had to be here and you're kind of going to surrender to it. So as long as you go with the flow and don't overthink things, I actually think you're going to get a lot of answers that are going to help you to repair and to heal and to stabilize who you are. It's just there's going to be a lot coming at you this month to shake that up. Um, But you do well with change as long as you don't kick and scream all the way. Okay, Um, I just I just see the silver lining of knowing that. Like, because when I see fives, I go, woof, that's a lot. But then I'm looking at your numbers and I go, actually, you're going to do very well with the change. Actually, things are going to clear out. Like, it's going to, like, it's going to force you to change your schedule. What's, what's happening this month? It's going to force you and your family to support you differently. It's going to force you to actually update things within your house. Um, and you're just like, well, I need to do this anyway didn't really want to do it, but I needed to do it anyway. So the change is actually going to bode well, and it's going to be easier. Just make sure you're doing the things that are good for you. And the rest opens up. Okay. So hang in there, hang in there. And you're going into, let's, so In October, it's going to be a time where family is going to be supporting you much more. Okay, things are kind of getting kicked up right now, but you're going into a six month for, for, for October next month. And that is the number of when family really steps in and it's a support system environment. And I really, really think that it's going, you know, all, all of what's happening is going to get you into a more present state. Like, I just feel like your mind's, ha- your mind has been in the past and been in the future a lot. And then when the future gets too overwhelming, you kind of just space out and go to the past again. Or, you know, sometimes we're in an altered state, like within spirit or in our imagination, Um, and we, we just do whatever we need to, to cope. So it's calling you back and it's going to make you go, how do I want to fight for, you know, my life to reclaim the power of who I am in a way where I'm actively 
changing, transforming, and being in mastery of who I am because I can't look away. Look away now. I have to be fully present. And I'm going to step into a different place of myself and rise. And that's the energy that I'm really getting. There's a lot more to be said with that, but that is the energy that I'm absolutely getting regarding your question and your numbers. And uh, I'm excited for some of that energy to surge within you. So that's the positive I feel. I feel like there's a new energy surgence where there's going to be more vitality where it seems like there's not going to be vitality, but there's going to be more vitality in places that are that are unexpected. But you get it. Okay. So, all right. Let's take one quick one before we go. Um, there was a question, I think. Top. Did someone drop there? Oh, someone... Someone asked about vowels. Would you consider, oh, oh, someone's asked about the Y rule. Okay, great question. Great question. Uh, Never, never uh, a dull question with Y. (laughs) Okay, so the letter Y in numerology. So every number, excuse me, every letter breaks down into a number and Y is a seven. And we have to know for the personality number and the soul number, how do we add things? Because we can throw it off by if we consider the letter Y a vowel or a consonant. So we've talked about this before. And so if a Y is next to a vowel, and so you pop down, um, I think someone you know's last name, you pop down their, their, their name. And if the, so YA, I'm not going to say the full name, but it's like YAE. That means that the the Y is a consonant. So when you have a Y next to a vowel, it's a consonant. Um, If you have a Y next to another consonant, it's a vowel. And it's pretty consistent within that most times. Again, just like check in with your English languaging rules and principles. Um, From time to time, I always try to sharpen up on it myself. Uh, Language, right? We're dealing with language. Numerology is a language. Make sure you're translating your language effectively. That's what I have to say. And that's how you would use your why. Um, Hope that makes sense. You're welcome. I'm glad you understand. And Lori, you're welcome to as well. Thank you. Um, With that said, everybody, thank you so much for being here today um, with the Numerology Hour. We will see you in just a few with the Psychic Hour. Take care. Please go with love, luck, light, laughter, and don't forget to live. Bye. The truth is here and now on WLTKDB talk radio at wltkdb.com.